In between you and your game is your hardware. It's the link that enables you to be your best self at whatever competitive game you are playing. Making sure your setup is optimized is important to ensuring that you can improve your game and aren't being held back for arbitrary reasons. That's where this video comes in. Over the years, esports pros have done most of the work already in determining what a good setup looks like. And this video will guide you through some of the key things to keep in mind when getting together your own pro setup. The mouse is where it all begins, and its sensitivity is measured in dots per inch, or DPI. DPI is a measurement of how many points of movement your mouse will measure per inch that you move it. So a mouse at 500 DPI will measure 500 points of movement, more commonly measured as pixels, per inch when you move it. In short, it's how sensitive to movement your mouse is. And while hardware manufacturers generally advertise high DPS mice as a selling feature, most pros are anywhere between 500 and 1700 DPI. Anything higher than that is probably overkill. Overwatch, like most games, uses its own sensitivity slider in the options menu that changes how sensitive your mouse is. Because the sensitivity values in Overwatch and the hardware values of DPI on mice are different, a common way to measure mouse sensitivity is through eDPI, better known as effective dots per inch. This value is just the multiplication of DPI with sensitivity and will ensure that comparisons are done more fairly regardless of their software or hardware setups. Using data from ProSettings.net and Gear8.com, we can see that the average eDPI of Overwatch League pros is fairly different across the roles that they play, with tank players favoring a higher sensitivity since they generally don't need to have very precise aim. DPS are on the mid-range of the three roles and supports are on the lower end, presumably with the advent of aim-focused supports like Zenyatta and Ana. 스캔 사용하는 캐릭터들은 800 DPI의 5.5, 겐지나 파라 같은 경우에는 7, 정크렛 둠핏 리퍼가 6. 아마추어 시절에는 항상 손목을 쓰던 유저여서 DPI가 엄청 높았었거든요. 지금은 800 DPI의 인게임 5.5까지 낮췄는데 모든 캐릭터를 다루는 데 있어서 도움이 됐던 것 같아요. At the end of the day, DPI settings are one of the most variable settings that change from player to player, but most Overwatch pros typically favor a lower sensitivity setting and use of their arm not their wrist, to aim their mouse. Most modern mice have a DPI switch button that will switch the DPI setting on the fly, which can be useful in some situations. For hardware, as of the time of this video, most pros seem to favor mice that are made by Logitech. Logitech designed and made this mouse for esports pros, and some of its outstanding features are the one millisecond response time and weighing in at 80 grams. This is perfect for those who want a lightweighted mouse with no cables, just like Agilities. G Pro Wireless is also used by many pros within the Overwatch League. And an awesome feature is the fact that it's ambidextrous. So if you're right or left-handed, you're good to use this mouse with absolute comfort. While we occasionally hear stories of pros using trackballs or pen tablets for aiming, it's safe to say that a Logitech mouse seems to be the way to go for most pro players. Most pros in Overwatch favor a 1080p resolution unstretched. However, like most games, Pros do favor having a higher refresh rate on their monitors. Hertz is a unit of measurement used in monitors to show how often an image is refreshed per second. So a 1000 Hertz display will update the image on the screen 100 times per second. Because of this, over 80% of pros use a 240 Hertz display, and not a single Overwatch League Pro uses a 60 Hertz display, which has been a non-gaming standard for quite some time now. To make sure your high refresh rate is hit, you're going to need to have a high enough FPS to meet it. So if you're below 60 FPS, it might be smart to lower your game's resolution down to 720p or lower. Most Overwatch League players use the top of the line NVIDIA Series 3000 GPUs, but you can still run Overwatch fine on something more moderate. For FOV, pretty much all pros have it maxed out to the game's limit of 103, which makes sense since it enables you to view more on the screen at the same time. For hardware display, since the Overwatch League happens remotely, there isn't one main monitor that is used on stage for everyone. In Season 1, the monitor used across the board was the ASUS PG258Q, 
coming in at a 240Hz refresh rate and a 1 millisecond response time. It also has some features which are specific to gaming, such as separate contrast profiles for different genres, and the ability to draw crosshairs, timers, or FPS counters directly on your screen. Before COVID, the other main monitor that was found on stage during the Overwatch League was the Omen X25. At the time of Season 2, the 240Hz version was not yet available to the public, but has since come out and is used by over 60% of Overwatch League players. While most of the graphic settings found in Overwatch are self-explanatory, here are some less commonly understood ones. V-Sync can reduce screen tearing if you are having issues, but it may create some input lag. Input lag is obviously important to minimize, so it's crucial to weigh the options here. Reduce buffering will remove the built-in three frames of buffer from the game, which actually adds input lag in between your inputs and the game, so it's recommended to keep this on. Texture filtering quality is not particularly noticeable, so keeping it at one times is a good rule of thumb. Effects quality can affect how certain abilities appear on screen, with a higher quality setting making some abilities easier to see and identify at a glance. If there was any setting to leave on medium or higher, it would be this one. Local fog detail is simply a fog effect that may reduce FPS, so it's up to you if you think it's worth it. Reflections are a visual effect that has no bearing on gameplay and can in some instances reduce your FPS by a fifth, so keep it on low if you don't want the added flare. Shadows, lighting, reflection, and ambient occlusion are all visual and should be turned down if you are having problems meeting a certain FPS. Keyboards are also fairly variable across most pro players. Most modern keyboards do the job just fine, however, almost all Overwatch League players use ones with mechanical switches rather than rubber dome ones. Mechanical switches, in general, are more durable and can feel significantly more responsive. Keybinds are going to be something else that is really variable, depending on your setup. Having a mouse with buttons on the side enables you to map more actions to your mouse hand, which frees up your keyboard hand to keep focusing on the movement keys. This is the main reason that a character like Tracer has her dash bound to right click, even though the primary bind is left shift. It just makes moving more fluid and easier. Keybinds can also be set on a per hero basis, and some pros notably use right click as the jump key on important mobility heroes like Lucio, and rebind the boop key to something else. Melee on its default is bound to V, but that might be a tricky button to press while you're in the heat of battle, which is why most Overwatch League pros rebind their melee to a side mouse button instead. Beyond just keybinds, there are also some per hero settings that can help with certain strategies. The key setting here that you really want to make sure you have off is Riptire automatically climbs walls because something you can do with Junkrat is run the Riptire up against a wall and not climb and that'll actually make the Riptire make no noise and let you kind of sneakily peek around a corner and see if any enemies are coming and that can lead to some easy kills. 저 같은 경우에는 루시우 같은 경우는 그냥 보시다시피 그냥 뒤로 배타기 허용만 해놔요. 이 허용을 해놓으면은 원래 허용을 안한 것보다 벽을 좀더 쉽게 탈수 있고 가속이 좀더잘 붙어요. 그리고 메리시 같은 경우에는 투굴빈 커넥션을 설정을 온으로 바꾸고 가디언 엔젤 프레스 빔 타겟을 오프로 해놔요. 또 이제 나노 부스터 이 덱을 하게 되면은 이 가운데가 없어요. 무조건 왼쪽에 뜨든 오른쪽에 뜨든 그래가지고 이거를 좀더 세밀하게 실수를 안 하기 위해서 제가 감도 같은 경우를 낮춰서 50으로 사용하고 있고요. At the end of the day, your setup is going to be a little bit different from everyone else's. And hopefully by now, you should have a good idea about what direction to take your hardware. Let us know if this video helped you and what kinds of things you would like to see in future similar videos. Thanks for watching. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan QB, Foxy, Lyra, Mob, Sierra, Shampoo, Weibu, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. As well as an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Andy for being Diamond supporters. Hope you guys liked the video! If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name's Jonah, thanks for watching.